Hello everybody, one more time my name is Alex Centeno and um, today we have a, an exciting tutorial. We're going to be talking about um, the GH4 vlog and we're going to be grading the footage directly uh, taken from the camera. So I've seen that um, a lot of videos are out there and some people are struggling because uh, they take the vlog and then um, it seems like they're having a lot of trouble making it work uh, in a Rec. 709 um, environment and so that's what we're going to be taking a look at today uh, hopefully briefly so let's let's get to it so here I have um, well first of all I'm in DaVinci Resolve and um, I already went through the process of creating a timeline and uh, I'm gonna first show you and, and adding a, a couple of clips to my timeline here, but I'm sure that you already know how to do that. Um, so, let's go here to my first clip, which is just a gradient from 100% black to 100% white. Uh, in other words, from zero to 100% luminosity. And uh, so all the values in between, right? Um, set all grades for this and so um, basically if we take a look at the waveform for this and let me just bring it up here for a second so so I have my scopes here and I have my waveform showing up and um, as you can see uh, this is pretty much linear almost completely linear but um, this uh, gradient I created with Photoshop with a color profile of sRGB and so it is almost completely linear and it is intended to display in a Rec. 709 um, monitor which is pretty much every monitor out there is calibrated to display images of Rec. 709 and so it looks like this so what I wanted to show you here was what happens when I just create another node and then I transform this to a logarith logarithmic curve. Um, in this case, I'm going to do it to a Cineon uh, log. So I have a linear one and I'm going to a Cineon one. All right, and you can see that my curve now changed dramatically and it's a different curve altogether. And you can see that obviously my gradient looks different. So, um, what is important to note here is that if I was to simply take my wheels, my color wheels, and reduce my blacks, right, like something like so maybe, and then increase my whites, or highlights in this case, and this is in log, and I go crazy with that. And then I just like try to play with my mids here to make it more or less what it is. Then you can you can easily tell in the gradient that this is not actually replicating a a linear display. So it's not bringing my log image to a Rec. 709 image. And that's usually the problem with people trying to correct uh, V-log from the GH4 uh, by just adjusting uh, the color wheels in logarithmic value. Uh, let's reset this. If I was to use my primary wheels and try to do something similar with my primary wheels, as you can see, it also would not work properly. Although probably, you know, I can get it to work more or less. But, um, but that's the beginning of the problem, I think. And so, uh, what is the right way of coloring or grading uh, your footage? Coming out of the GH4 with VLOG profile, um, how to do it? Well, the first thing that I want to say is that um, I've had better success by uh, overexposing by two stops. So what I do in the GH4 is that I change quickly to my standard profile just to kind of get like a better perspective of what's, um, you know, exposing properly. Um, I take a little bit of a look at my um, 
histogram in camera, although some people say that it's not very good representation of what's going on, um, but I do. And then uh, if I really have like some, some questions about real exposure, what's going on, then I can take a photo and then take a look at the histogram uh, in camera uh, for that. Obviously, you know, you could go with meters, light meters, and so forth, and so on. And um, But uh, just having the camera, uh, it's almost enough, I would say, to get a proper exposure. And so uh, changing quickly to the standard profile, then measuring your exposure, and then going back to V-log, then uh, you can probably overexpose by one or two stops. Usually one stop would do. Um, if you have a very contrasty scene, then probably, you know, probably, um, I, I would say probably one is going to be definitely the way to go. But if you have more of a flatter, uh, flatter exposure altogether, um, so you don't have a lot of highlights in the scene, um, and you, for example, you could have like a, a graded, um, ND filter, which is helping you bring some of the exposure, for example, of the sky down and things like that. So, so anyways, uh, you might get away with a plus two in the exposure. Uh, but overall, plus one exposure V-log uh, out of the camera. So this um, scene here is actually taking it with plus one exposure. So let's reset my grade. And very quickly, we're going to add a node. This one I'm, going to, I'm just going to call exposure. We're not going to be uh, taking a look at denoising in this video, but um, if you were denoising, then you, you would have like an initial um, node for the denoising first, then the exposure, and then the LUT, or the color lookup table. We're going to right click. We're going to go to 3D LUT, and then I'm going to be using um, the Ari Alexa Log C um, to Rec 7091, uh, which you can download for free in the Ari website. So you just have to create it. Just make sure that you, uh, when you're creating it, that you select the post production one because they have different kinds that you can um, come up with. So, this is the logarithmic C to Rec 709 LUT from the, the Ari Alexa camera. This is obviously the GH4, but I like the, the way that it actually deals with colors a little bit better than the Panasonic one. Let me show you, just for a matter of contrast, let me show you the Panasonic one comes with the uh, V-Log profile. So you can download this from the Panasonic website and uh, you can see that uh, you get a little bit more of, of a magenta in the colors and um, so I like better uh, the um, Alexa Airy one it works very well alright great so now we are at a Rec 709 so our curve is already looking a lot better and our footage is already looking great so if I was to bring my scopes here uh, and then come here to my primary bars then I can just adjust my lift without really moving or shifting the colors inside um, like so about 7 you can see here minus 0 0.7 should be okay um, and then I can adjust of course my gain depending on the scene and my mids. All right, that's, I think, a great beginning. Let's close here. So after the LUT, I can actually change curves a little bit to have a little bit more control so for example I feel like this is a bit yellow in, in the side there and that's kind of like in the middle so I can uh, bring it a little bit towards blue if I needed to um, 
and uh, make color corrections there at the end. Of course, this is just color correction and it's not getting into really the grading part of it. Uh, it still looks a little dull, if you ask me. It's like the colors don't really pop for me. And um, and so what we need to do is, is also bring that saturation up. If I was just to bring saturation, then I probably would introduce some um, macro blocking and some, um, I would say pixelation in a way, but um, I'm going to show you a technique that I like to do um, the increase of saturation without having to do that. So um, we're going to add a corrector node, uh, option S, and then option P to add a parallel node next to that one. This one we're going to call color lab a and this color lab B uh, of course you can save this so you don't have to do it every time um, you can just save it as a power grade um, so in the first one we're gonna go to color space lab and then we're going to be using only or enabling only channel 2 and then here we're going to Go to color space lab and enable only channel three all right so color two uh, channel two channel three channel two is for a or uh, green red and channel b is for blue yellow and so if i go to this node and i use the second channel which is rgb the second channel will be the G for green but in this case it changes because my color space is lab so now I'm controlling and let me show you if I bring this up it becomes magenta uh, or red uh, and uh, if I bring it down it becomes green um, so what I'm gonna do is leave the very center here because pretty much my image is white balanced and so I'm gonna bring the contrast up so I'm going to increase here with an S curve, a normal S curve to taste. Uh, probably I'm going to bring this a little bit down to 0.7 in the gain. And I'm going to do the same here. So 0.7 and then in the curve channel, this time third channel represented by the B. Place a point there and then increase my saturation. Uh, of that channel by creating a traditional S curve like so. Excellent. So now we can see obviously that our colors are going much much better. So let me show you changes in the blue here. Let me show you the changes in the green here and also the magenta. So it's definitely looking a lot crisper uh, just by the addition of this color. Look at here, the green and the magenta. Excellent. So let's go ahead and enable our color corrections here or our saturation corrections. Then after this, let's finish up strong with a sharpening technique. This time we're going to go to color space HSL. We're going to be using the third channel here. So we're going to enable only the third channel. And then we're going to uh, go to our sharpening panel. Select sharpen here, second option. I'm going to move this about 48 or so. Increase to about 80 here in my scaling. And then I'm going to just add very little, a little bit of coring softness. And now let's take a look. So you can see here a little bit of that sharpening effect. All right, before and after, before and after. Excellent. So let's let's take a look completely 
at what we have done. So this is the beginning vlog image from the GH4. This is the after one in Rec. 709. So as you can see in the shadows, we really don't have like this macro blocking. We don't have a lot of noise and that's without doing any noise. Of course, that should be the case in an image that has been taken at ISO 400 in the middle of the day. You shouldn't be having like any problems with noise, but a lot of people have been having the trouble with noise. I believe that is related to using V-Log with the proper exposure um, instead of plus one. Uh, so by the time that you increase a little bit of the image, most of the shadows are underexposed and so that shadow uh, becomes muggy and uh, noisy. Uh, but if you overexpose, then you have more information in the shadows. Uh, and then when you bring it down, then of course uh, that information is just uh, clean. So, so anyways, I hope that this has been beneficial for you. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, just let me know in the YouTube comments box. Uh, we always appreciate all sorts of comments, positive or negative, to make this videos more useful for you. If you have any questions or any particulars that you would like to learn, just let me know as well. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye-bye. <laughs>